Okay, so today we'll be looking at uh, chapter four of the book uh, that talks about uh, by, by various graphs. So for the learning objective, we are going to learn on how to use uh, by graph, graph, uh, which mainly deal with two, uh, uh, two variables to draw insight from our, to draw insight uh, using uh, our data. Though last week uh, we used look at a uh, univariate graph which was presented uh, by Lydia, but today I will be discussing using the bivariate uh, graph in R. So for the introduction, uh, mainly from the book, uh, they said that uh, bivariate graph display the relationship uh, between two variables. So if you really want to really plot it, uh, that means we need to use a bivariate graph and the type of graph will depend uh, on the measurement level of the variables, uh, we can choose to use the, the variables could be categorical variable, can be also be quantitative variables. So we can just easily uh, visualize uh, this data to draw uh, insights. So the first uh, examples we'll be looking at in the bivariate graph, we'll be looking at uh, a stack bar chart. And a stamp bar chart, we can have a categorical variable. We can also have another variable that is continuous. And we can have two categorical variables and one continuous variable. Uh, we can easily visualize uh, this data using a stamp uh, bar chart. So for this uh, example, uh, the first thing we do is for us to load uh, our library, which is library uh, ggplot2 so that we can get access uh, to the uh, our plotting functions uh, that we'll be using uh, to visualize uh, the data. So first of all, uh, in ggplot uh, is for us to pass in our data set in which we want to use uh, for visualization. And in this case, uh, we are using uh, we are using the MPG uh, data set, which is the miles per, per gallon. Then the next thing is for us to do our mapping in the aesthetic uh, layers, is for us to map the class to the X variable, and we fill it by the different drive of the car. Then we add a new layer, which is for the geometry. Then in this, in this geometry layer, we only add the position, and we say the position uh, should be what stack. But the, by default, the default function for uh, geombar or geomcon, uh, the default setting is always uh, is always position is equals uh, to stack. So even though we do not put uh, the position is equals to stack using this quote, we still get uh, we still get uh, the same we still get the same outputs. And and from this output, we can see that uh, majority uh, of the SUV class of car there has a, a Four wheel drive. Then, when we go over to the two seater car, two seater car, we can see that the majority of them they have uh, they have a rear wheel drive. While those vehicles uh, that are that are mid size, uh, majority of them, in this case, they have uh, the front uh, the front wheel. If they have the front wheel uh, drive, so. I think uh, that is uh, basically what we have for this part that is about uh, the stack bar charts. So for the next, uh, for the next, we'll be talking about uh, the group bar charts. Group bar charts are very useful when we have uh, um, uh, when we have more than uh, one uh, group, and then we want to easily uh, visualize. Uh, this together using a bar chart. So, so we're still using our library. Then we are still using our aesthetic mapping and also the data. But in this case, we have uh, John Bar. Then we are within John Bar, we set position. We are using position uh, underscore. We, we are using position dodge. So when using position, is equals to dodge. Uh, we can see, uh, we can see that there, there's, we can see that minivan, uh, minivan. Uh, we are using compact. We have the two seater car. 
and we also have the SUV car. But in, in these instances, there were some values. Uh, uh, they do discuss that there were some values that, that we are initially zero in this, that we are grouped as zero. So they were initially plotted. That is why we are seeing that the width of the bar for both uh, the pickup and the minivan, the width is a bit uh, wider. So in order uh, for us to overcome that, in order for us to be able to overcome that, we can we can use within the position underscore dodge. We can say preserve. It should preserve only uh, the single value, but the default is always preserve is equals to what total, which is uh, the default uh, plotting uh, function for ggplot2. And uh, we can look at the documentation of what uh, the position dodge function is doing. We can easily look at the documentation, ggplot2. ggplot2, sorry, position underscore position, position underscore, sorry, position underscore dodge. Here we have question mark. Okay. I'm so, I don't, sorry, I have to restart, but I can't do that now. So let's just proceed, but the default is always uh, preserved. Within the preserve, the default is always total. That is to preserve the entire, but we can override that by say preserve uh, to be single so that all those zero that were initially plotted, uh, we, can, we, can drop, we can drop those values. So once we do that, uh, we discover, uh, we can see that we are getting a different uh, visualization. We can see that the, those zero that were initially plotted, they were dropped initially from the plot. And we can now see that all the bars, they now have uh, the same width. It's all bars in which we, are, we plotted, they are now, they now have uh, the same width. They will now have uh, the same width. But they do explain that this preserve function is always available in the latest versions of ggplot2, but should be generally available shortly. So it's the latest version that will have the access uh, to that uh, function. So once that has been done, we can now see that uh, just we move from bars having different, uh, different widths. So we can now go to this other bars in which all the, uh, we're using preserve is equals to single. We now have uh, the same width. Okay, so I don't know if there are any comments uh, based on this, uh, uh, this section before I proceed uh, to the next part. Yeah, this, uh, question or comment? Yeah, so I don't, I guess I didn't get to read this chapter yet. Did they mention anything about like on that last one, when it's the single bar, is there a way to make it so that the bar is on the line? Because like the ones where there was like, it condensed like the, uh, if you go all the way down. Okay. Oh, all the, yeah, so like, like all the way down on this one, where now like something like pickup and minivan have a single bar, um, but it's like, it's not centered on the word pickup or, or like two seater. I'm wondering if there's a way to do that. I don't. I don't get you. Can you repeat again? Um, if you go down to the the last picture, the last graph. Okay. Like so, these ones for the pickup, it's not centered on the word, like pickup, minivan, two seater. The bar itself isn't centered on the word. They might not yes. have said anything about it. But I'm wondering if there's a way to change that yes i've seen it is not centered uh, um, okay. 
this term is this group bar charts. Okay. Hey, Lydia. I'm um, I'm going off of memory here, and this is from several months ago, and I think a different book club. But the word boundary comes to mind related to that, and so there might be a setting um, of the word boundary mm. that that once you change that boundary, then it allows it to align. But oh, okay. like I said, that's just off the top of my head and it's kind of a fuzzy memory, but I think that's what it was. Oh, okay. I can check it afterwards. Okay, of course. Yeah, for me, like, it, I like it now that the it's the single bars, but I wish it was centered on the way. <laughs> okay, so if I remove the preserve, I think if I remove that preserve, preserve single, the default is always, I think, total is the default when we return single. I think width 0 0.5. Uh, um, It is one. Yeah, that's something we can look into later, but yeah, I'd be interested to know that. I'm wondering if it was in the ggplot2 one. That's Ryan, right? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But this was yeah, the default. that's what I was remembering. Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK, OK, no problem. I think this was the default plot using preserve total, which was the default plot that we had. But in this case, I'd say it was plotting, from what they discussed, it was plotting some value, uh, from the, some values that were for four wheels and also for the front wheel that were zero. So once we adjust that, uh, when we have single, but I, did not, I don't know how, I don't know if anybody can jump in here to it. I'll probably look into it a bit more. I don't want to keep up the presentation though. If you want to go. Okay. So go back to my notes. Okay, so this one is basically about, uh, the, it's still about bar plot, but it's segmented bar charts, uh, which is always uh, very, very useful uh, for in which each bar, uh, they actually represent, uh, the height of the bar represents uh, in percentages. So, in, but in this case, we are still using uh, the same example, just as uh, we showed above. But we are still adding, we just added a jump bar. But in this case, instead of we to use a position dash, but we are now using position uh, is equals to position is equals uh, to field. So when we use uh, the position uh, is equals to field. So it's just, it's just filling, it's just going to fill each bar using uh, the proportion. So we have from zero. Uh, to around 100, which is the, the height, which now shows a uh, proportion. So it's, the x axis is still showing us uh, the class. The y is, uh, is now 
uh, 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 is filling them by the proportion of the for the different for the three different type of uh, drive of the car. But in order, but this one uh, is very very uh, difficult uh, for uh, people that are reading the plots for them to really capture to really understand the in terms of the proportion. It might be difficult uh, once uh, uh, reading through uh, these visuals. But how do we improve it? Uh, by how we need to improve it by adding more uh, label into the plot. So in this case, we are, we are using the scales uh, functions. Uh, from the scales function, we can we can insert uh, percentages uh, and using both the scales and also the jump text to add those text uh, label on the plot. But in this case, we are still using our ggplot2 function. Then the x we said uh, the class should be a factor. Uh, we specify the levels. Uh, the levels of that factor it should be two seater, uh, subcompact, compact, mid size, minivan, SUV, and pickup. Then for the, then for I'm sorry, then for the fill, fill should also be a factor. And the asset of the, the the drive and if a uh, the level should be front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and four wheel. Then we are still using jump bar. Then we said position uh, should be filled. Then for the y, uh, for the y scale for y, we, we use scale y continuous function to scale the y axis. Then we set the brakes, which should be a sequence of number from zero to 100. So we are breaking by 20. Then the labels that we are placing should be in percentage uh, format. Then for this, for the field, scale field brewer, uh, using the alcohol brewer package, we are using pallets should be set to. Then we add some labels on the plots to make it easy for our audience to read the plots. Then we are using team, uh, we are using the minimal team uh, from ggplot2. So once we add that to the plot, you can see that we have started improving the plot. So we just say this auto mobile drive by class. These are the different class of the car. These are percentage. This is the drive trends. This is front wheel. This is rear wheel. This is a uh, four wheel drive. So, but when we add, uh, we can create a summary of the data sets. But in this case, we are they were using the Dipla package. So this are this is a plot data, with, which is a new object we are creating. We are using the MPG data, and then we are grouping by class and the drive, and then we are using the summarize uh, function. This is going to give us all the counts, and then we are creating a new column that will be the percentage, which is a count, all of our sum of the counts. And then we add the labels because you need the labels uh, to be in percentage, which is scales, percent of all the PCT percentage. So when we do that, we can now uh, view the table, which shows that this is class, these are the drive, this is the count, this is the percentage, this is the percentage uh, label. So we can now plot this uh, using uh, ggplot2. So this is the plot data. The aesthetics X should be a factor of class. Then the level should be two seater, subcompact, compact, mid size, minivan. Then Y should be percentage. Then we fill by factor of drive. This is the levels, which is, we have three levels. These are the labels we want to use. Then we are using job bar. Uh, John Bar is going to plot the bar plots. Then within John Bar, we are overwriting, writing the default statistics. That is why we choose uh, to use uh, start identity. Then position, we are using position field. Then scale Y continuous. Then we specify the breaks for the Y and also the labels. Then we use job text. To add the text label aesthetics, label is equals to help label size of the 
uh, level is three, position is equals to position underscore step, then vertical justification, we set it to 0 0.5. This is going to have the color palette. If we add labels and we put a team. So when we now do that, uh, we can now see that uh, the plot becomes uh, more easy for our audience uh, to read the plot. You can see minivan 100% uh, of the minivans they have uh, the front wheel drive, 100% uh, two-seater cars as rear wheel drive. So it becomes uh, very easy uh, for, for the way to move from a default plot that is very uh, difficult uh, for our audience uh, to read. So uh, we now move uh, to this uh, graphics uh, that is very easy uh, for our audience to read. So uh, I think that is all I have for this uh, section about uh, the, the bar graph. I think the next one is uh, the scatter plots. I think scatter plots is when we have two uh, values that are continuous that we want to really easily uh, visualize them. Then that, in that case, uh, we can use uh, a, a scatter plot. And in this case, we are using the salaries uh, data set that is from the from the cars uh, package. So we simply uh, visualize this data where we map the years since PhD in the X axis, Y axis, we are ma uh, mapping the car salary. Then we are having a new layer which shows that we are we want a scatter plot which is uh, jump point. And uh, once we do that, we see that uh, we as the years since PhD increases. Uh, the more uh, the salary. So because we have uh, uh, a positive uh, relationship in this case, but we can enhance uh, this uh, scatter plot uh, by adding more layers to it. So in this case, uh, we are still using our salary. So we only add June points. Then the color of the points should be corn flower blue. Then the size of the points should be two. Alpha to control the transparency should be 0.8. Then scale, we are using the scale Y uh, continuous. Then we say the level should be scales, which is dollar. Then the limits should be between 50,000 to 250,000. Then for this X, we specify the breaks, which will be sequence from zero to 60 by 10. Then the limits should be from zero to 60. Then we add some labels. Yes, since PhD, then we leave the Y to be blank. Then the title, which is experience versus salary. Then the subtitle, nine months salary for 20, 2008 uh, to 2009. So once uh, we add uh, that, uh, it becomes uh, also very easy uh, for people that are reading the plot uh, for them to really uh, capture the message in which you are trying uh, to pass along to your audience because in every uh, data visualization, uh, you need to, you need to make it, uh, we need to make it uh, simple. We need to make it self-explanatory. So, so the next thing is to add in uh, the best fit lines. So the line of best fit uh, into this uh, visualization, and that can easily be done uh, using uh, the Joom smooth function. And with the Joom smooth function, we only need to specify uh, the method. In this case, we choose to use uh, the linear model. So once we do that, it's going to put the best fit line, and it's also going to put uh, the confidence, 95% uh, confidence uh, interval uh, on the plot. So we can also choose to use, uh, uh, the, we can also put fit, the best fit line uh, using the quadratic uh, function. But in this case, we need to pass in uh, the formula. So we say the method should be linear model. Then we specify a formula, which is a polynomial function. Then the color should be Indian red three. So once we once we run that, we will get uh, we will get this 
the same line of vest fits. The color is Indian red three. We still uh, fit in uh, the 95% uh, confidence uh, interval on the same plot. So we uh, the, they also discuss about uh, the line graph, uh, line graph which are uh, which is very useful uh, to show uh, to show how a certain variable changes over time, which is very useful for time series plots. But in this case, they were making use of the GapMinder uh, data sets. They filter out from within the GapMinder country uh, that is equal to uh, United States, and they simply did a, a, a simple plot where they map years in the X axis, life expectancy in the Y axis, and they use job line, which on uh, this initial plot shows how the life expectancy from 1950 has increased as it increases over time. How the life expectancy increased from 1950 uh, over time. But uh, this same uh, visualization, we can improve it by adding uh, labels and also adding a new line of jump points uh, into this graph. So once we do that, once we do that by adding uh, from jump line, we add uh, the new line of jump points, then we add some axis uh, labels on this graph. So this graph, uh, the same graph that we have above, we can be something like this, which is also very, uh, which is very, uh, very uh, useful. That means uh, we, were, we came, from it, our default graph, uh, we added uh, more uh, layers and also modify the themes to this uh, graph. We add some axis uh, labels. Uh, we move straight to this. So, so we uh, they also discuss about uh, bar charts on summary statistics. So. Uh, and the, the data they are still using, they are using uh, the salaries uh, data sets. So they just say the salaries and then they say the group by, the group by all the rank and then they summarize main salary, which is the main of salary. And then they assign all this into an object called uh, plot data. Then they did uh, the visualization, they did the initial visualization using job bar. They always add a new layer start identity because to override uh, the default statistics. So they loaded the library scales because uh, they want to add, uh, they want to use it to add percentages on the plots on the y-axis. So they have plot data, aesthetics X should be a factor of rank the label should be this assistant professor forward slash n, which is going to insert a line break, associate professor, and full professor. So y should be the mean salary. Then plus a new layer, job bar, start identity, field color is color, cornflower blue. Then they had a text. Aesthetics labels should be dollar, mean salary, the vertical justification should be minus 0 0.25. Then for, for the scale Y continuous, they specify breaks, which is for a sequence of from zero to 130,000 by 20,000. Then the label should be dollar. Then they add some axis uh, labels on the plots to make uh, the plot uh, to be easy to read. So we can see that we have assistant professor. For assistant professor, what is the main salary is around $80,776. For associate professor, should be $93,876. For full professor will be around $126,000. $772. So that is uh, okay. 
So I don't know if there are any comments based on this before we proceed to the other parts of the discussion. No comments. Just very cool. <laughs> it's very nice. Okay, so this one is about uh, the group kernel uh, density uh, plots. So they say that we can compare groups on a numeric variable by superimposing kernel density plots in a single uh, graph. Uh, okay, so in this case, uh, they are still using the salaries data set. Uh, they are mapping salary to the x axis field, but they are filling. Uh, the, uh, the density plot by all the rank. So they just use germ density. Then they say alpha should be 0 0.4 to control uh, the transparency of the plots. Then they ask, they ask this lab's title, which is salary distribution by, by rank. So once we use alpha is equals to 0 0.5, this sets the field transparency into on the field because it becomes very easy for us to read the uh, to read the density plots that overlap each other. We can see those ones that overlap each other, and we can easily read them. Okay. Okay, so like uh, box plots. So box plots are very useful uh, when we we have both categorical and uh, also numeric variable, and they they will help us show uh, the distribution that we have from our data using uh, the five uh, number uh, summary, and they are very very useful in this case. So, but in this uh, example, they were still using uh, the, the salaries uh, data sets. So they map the rank to the X axis. They also map salary to the Y axis. Then they use GEOM box plot plus labs title salary distribution uh, by rank. And this shows uh, that for the professor, there were three data points uh, that fall out side at uh, this range uh, which are which are outliers so but uh but it is also in some instances we might want to check if actually the median value which we are gotten from this uh, box plot they, they are significantly what are uh, different uh from each other in that case we can choose to use set the notch equals to true, then field is equals to corn, corn flower blue, alpha uh, point, uh, seven. So once we do that, once we set uh, the notch is equals to true, we can easily compare if uh, the median value between those bar charts, they do, not, uh, they do not collide with each other, then in that case, we can uh, declare uh, with 95% uh, percent, uh, confidence that the median, uh, the median salary uh, within uh, those group, uh, within those group in which we are comparing in this case, which are the rank, that they are significantly different uh, from each other, which we can see in our previous plots using the bar plots, that the difference in the salaries for the different rank of professors that they are different, we can conclude that is, they are significantly different uh, from each other. So uh, the alternative to that, uh, we can use a Baolin plot, which is, still, which, still is, which is going to show us uh, the distribution, the distribution uh, that we got uh, from our data. So in this case, we are just using a different geometry we are still doing the same mapping, but we just change the geometry from geom, uh, from geom box plot to geom violin. So this is going to give us uh, this uh, visualization. 
and it's also going to show us uh, the distribution that, that is using the shape. But we can superimpose these uh, violin plots on a box plot, uh, which will still convey uh, the same message. We can superimpose them. And how do we do that? After John violin, we just add a new layer of John box plots into our visualization. And it's just going to place uh, the box plot inside uh, a violin, place the box plot inside a violin plot because the first layer will draw the violin plot. The next layer we add is a box plot, which is going to draw on top of the violin plot. So uh, another, another visualization in which they also discuss in the chapter, uh, they discuss about the rich, the rich line the rich line plots. And this is also very, very useful if you want to convey maybe changes that have occurred over time in terms of, we can use it to compare, show temperature change also over time. It's also very useful. But in this case, in this case, uh, uh, we are mapping cylinder uh, to the to the x axis, we are mapping class to the y axis. Then we fill uh, by the class. Then we are using uh, geom density uh, ridges plus we are using team ridges from the from from the GG ridges uh, package. So for the labs, uh, for the labs, we are just say it should be highway mileage by auto class, then for the team, legend of position, none because you do not want to show uh, the legend. But in this case, the package will just put, pick the bandwidth of default bandwidth, which is uh, 0 0.9, uh, 9 to 0 0.9 to, Okay, 0 0.929. So when we have that, we have, we are going to get, uh, we are going to get uh, this shape, which is shows the X axis shows the cylinder, the Y axis shows the class, which can be, in this case, we can, if, let me say for an instance, maybe I got temperature, I can map the temperature in the x-axis and half month, maybe from January to December. I can map that in the y-axis and it will show uh, the temperature, uh, temperature, temperature change uh, over time. But in this case, this is for the cylinder, then this is going to show the pattern that we have. Uh, so we have this one is, talk about this section, they talk about mean or standard error of mean plots. So how do we go about that? So in this case, uh, they load the deep layer package. They are still making use of the salaries data that comes from there. And then they are grouping by the rank. And then so they summarize, they got all the counts. Then here the mean, which is going to be mean of all the salary, the standard deviation, which is will be standard deviation of the salary. Then we have standard error, which is standard deviation or over square root of n, confidence interval, uh, quantity of uh, 0 0.975, then degree of freedom should be the, the count minus one times standard deviation all over square root of the counts, which is going to give us uh, the the, the confidence uh, interval. So all this, uh, they assign it to an object called uh, plot, plot underscore, plot underscore, plot data. So they, they now did uh, the visualization where they have plot data, aesthetics, X, the map rank, Y, they have main, then group is equals to one, jump point, size is three, 
then germ line, then they add a germ error bar, aesthetics, then they say the Y minimum is mean minus standard error, Y maximum should be mean plus standard error, then the width of the bar should be 0 0.1. But I think uh, with the new function, the start uh, summary function uh, from ggplot2 uh, is very easy uh, for us to do all this in our in our data visualization, which in which case we do not need to calculate all these values uh, uh, manually. So we can just use the start uh, summary functions, uh, which we can use and put all the calculate the standard error, put everything within our data visualization rather than we moving through uh, these steps. So, but this one still show that associate professor, assistant professor, associate professor, and professor. And we can now see the standard error. It shows how they are, they are as they are, how their salary is increasing from assistant professor to associate professor. From there, we get to the full professor. But uh, we can also calculate uh, mean standard deviation and also the standard error, which is standard deviation over square root of the uh, count. So we can still plot this on the graph. We can still plot it on the graph where we have group by sex, we have color by sex, uh, geom points, uh, which is going to draw the points, geom line, which is going to draw uh, the line. Then we put the geom error bar, which is Y minimum, the mean, I'm a standard error uh, and the y maximum will be mean plus standard error. Then the width should be uh, point, uh, the width should be point 0.1. Uh, this is just going to draw this uh, uh, bar, bar line graph with the error bar. But uh, there, there is one problem with this error bar. We are seeing that the points, they are overlapping each other. But for we to overcome that, we can use the position underscore dodge function. Then we set the dodge to be point uh, two. So once uh, once we do that, once we do that, uh, we are going to be able to dodge those. Uh, we are going to dodge those error bar, and becomes very easy for us to distinguish uh, those points because after dodging those error bars. So uh, this strip plots, strip plot there, which shows the relationship between a group in variable and a numeric uh, variable. So in this case, uh, we still use this, uh, the salaries data set. We are just using John point. But in this case, we are mapping the rank to the y axis and salary to the x axis. Uh, but in this graph, uh, it becomes very difficult for us to really understand because uh, the, uh, of the problem of uh, over plotting. Because we can see uh, how the points uh, they are uh, they are clustered, uh, they are sitting even on top of each other. But in order for us uh, to overcome that. Uh, uh, we can choose to use uh, this uh, geom jitter function, which will add uh, some random noise, which will spread uh, those uh, data points a little bit, which becomes uh, easy for us uh, to, to read uh, the plot. But uh, we can also uh, we can also modify. Uh, we can also adjust uh, this graph by adding some colors to make it easy uh, to distinguish uh, each group from each other. In this case, we can see that this is for full professor, uh, these are for associate professor, and also the assistant uh, professor, uh, which is uh, becomes uh, very easy uh, for us to read the graph. Okay, so this part talks about uh, this one, uh, this one plot. They said it is also called 
the violin scatter plot. So, and this is mainly uses uh, the library GGB Swarm. They also use the scales library. They are still using the salaries data sets. So the X should be a factor of blank. Then these are the labels. These are the labels. Then Y should be salary. Then uh, color should be rank plus geom quasi random. Then alpha should be 0 0.7. Then the size should be 1.5. Then they say scale wise continuous to put the values in a dollar format. Then they add some labs to make it easy to read the plots. The, since we are not interested in the legend, so we say legend or position to be known to remove uh, that uh, legend. So once we do that, uh, we are going to get uh, we are going to get uh, this uh, this uh, swarm. Uh, plots uh, which is looks which looks like uh, the initial uh, scatter plots in which I showed using Joe Cheetah to spread uh, the points. But this is also similar uh, to that. I think uh, the last is this uh, Cleveland uh, dot uh, chart, uh, which which I can also call. Uh, the with is also called uh, the lollipop charts. So, but in this case, they are using the gap minder data, the field star continent that is equals to Asia and the year that is equals to 2007. Then they save the object into plot data, then the plot data, the map life expectancy. Uh, to the x axis, then the y axis, the reorder country by, by life expectancy. Then uh, they use a uh, jump point. Color should be blue, size should be two. Then they, they use jump segment to draw a straight line around, to draw a straight line. Then the x should be 40, xn should be life expectancy. Y should be reorder country by life expectancy. YN should be reorder country by life expectancy. Then color should be light gray. Then they add some laps. Okay. Then they set the team should be minimal. Then they set team panel dot grid dot major element blank to remove all the major grid line. Then we have panel dot grid dot minor. Uh, element blank to remove uh, the minor uh, grid line. So once uh, we run uh, the code, we are going to have uh, these uh, lowly pop charts, which shows we are going to have this uh, lowly pop chart. I think I think uh, that is all for what I got from the. Chapter. Okay, thank you so much, Fami. I guess, does anyone have any other questions or comments before we wrap up for today? And yeah, great presentation. I really like this chapter. I had a comp exam this week, so I didn't get to read it, but I'm definitely going to go back and read it and play around with the code. This was awesome. Thank you so much, Fami. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So next week we'll have Ken presenting chapter five, multivariate um multivariate graphs. So yeah, so I'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. Um yeah, thank you again, Femi. And I hope everyone has a good weekend. Oh, end of the weekend, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, bye everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.